the mutational landscape of pancreatic cancer is, is fairly bland. And the two mountains within that landscape are oncogenic KRAS and P53. Um, both of those mutations co-occur at a very high rate, about 70, 60, 70% in all of pancreatic cancer patients. And they're recognized as, as the top genetic drivers. So our goal was to figure out, um, given that high incidence of co-occurrence and the fact that P53, the mutant form of P53 is more prevalent than the null or loss form of P53. Um, is there some biologic advantage conferred when you have mutant P53 in the setting of oncogenic KRAS relative to the simple loss of P53? And since mutant P53 is the most commonly altered tumor suppressor gene in human cancer, period, we hypothesized that the mutant forms of these proteins, which you know, tumor suppressors are generally lost, but mutant P53 generates abnormal physical mutant proteins. And, and so it's, it's been known for some time through the work of many others that those mutant P53 proteins interact with other proteins within the cell and um, confer oncogenic properties such as increased migration, invasion, metastasis, proliferation. I mean, the list is extensive. And so we, we hypothesized that mutant P53 was somehow working with oncogenic KRAS to um, confer increased fitness traits to, to pancreatic cancer cells that allows them to metastasize better, more efficiently. So we generated um, a mouse model system, a new mouse model, a KBC mouse model that had somatic mutant P53. We compared it to the same mouse model that had deletion of P53. And then we um, identified transcription factors that mutant P53 was associated with. We went to our human patient derived xenograft systems and repeated that study, this time with P53 null and P53, mutant P53 high, and also got a list of transcription factors. And then we took the overlap, which was on a protein named FOXA1. Uh, FOXA1 has been implicated in metastasis, uh, more so in the last couple of years, and, and even in pancreatic cancer metastasis. So that, that got our attention because our mutant P53 model had more metastasis relative to the uh, loss of P53 model. So uh, from there, we, we, we kind of did some deep science to figure out or to confirm that that protein FOXA1 was regulated by mutant P53, and it was doing it through a separate protein called CREB1. And the unique thing about CREB1 is that it generally has to be activated in order um, for mutant P53 to bind to it. And what activates CREB1? A lot of, a lot of um, KRAS effectors. So that got our attention. So then we're, we're, we're faced with the situation where this, this protein that mutant P53 binds to, to upregulate FOXA1, is activated by a lot of the same genes that KRAS, the mitogenic genes that KRAS activates. So, so then through that level of inquiry, we confirmed that oncogenic KRAS effectors phosphorylate and activate CREB1 and allow mutant P53 to bind to it, which then go and upregulate FOXA1 transcriptional networks and WINT beta catenin signaling as well. So it's that multiplexed activation of transcriptional networks by in a KRAS dependent manner because KRAS is enabling the mutant P53 data function to occur. And so that's the that's kind of the deep mechanistic work we did. We also found the one CREB inhibitor we can identify that was previously published and found that when we treated pancreatic cancer cells with that drug, when beta catenin signaling went way down, FOXA1 went way down, um, CREB phosphorylation went way down. So um, and that's also what we saw when we silenced KRAS. So a lot of those things fit, you know, fundamentally we identified CREB1 as this 
signaling node between oncogenic KRAS and mutant P53, and as the link between those two axes that's targetable with, with this drug.